Well, there's two types of view, really. Because, of course, in one way, views is regarded as a fetter, is regarded as one of the six disturbing emotions, the clinging to views. Views there mean the views that are unhealthy for us, views which posit the idea of things, some things being eternal, and so the eternalist view, or things which tend towards non-existence, which, which is said kind of nihilism, the, the rupture between cause and effect. Those are unhealthy views because they tend to produce disturbing emotions which lead to mistaken actions. For them, they must be replaced by the right view, which of course is the first of the Eightfold Noble Path, propounded by Lord Buddha. So, view means the vision of reality as it is, coming to see reality as it is, which is of course crucial for Buddhism, because Buddhism isn't a system of salvation by faith, or dependence, or devotion. It depends upon replacing ignorance with clear, accurate seeing of what is. So, we need to acquire the right view. Now, within uh, Buddha's teaching, Buddha himself presented the view, the vision of reality, in a number of different ways, according to the aptitude and capacities of the disciples he was addressing. But for us, we consider that the supreme presentation of the view is found in Buddha's Mahayana Sutras, the Mahayana Sutras of the second and third turnings of the wheel, which stress that all appearances arise from mind, but that finally mind itself lacks any abiding nature. And this is the view that's presented in the, the greatest of the schools of Buddhist philosophy, or systems of tenets, which is the Madhyamaka, or middle way view. So from a philosophical intellectual point of view, we need to acquire confidence in that Madhyamaka view because it cuts through our clinging to extreme and unhealthy views like eternalism and nihilism. But then when we enter, if we enter into Vajrayana practice, we introduce to the view in a, in a way which is far more immediate and therefore uh, leads us to a non-conceptual experience of reality. This is the method of initiation in Vajrayana or the introduction to one's nature presented in Dzokha Jempo. So there the view is at its most kind of refined and direct. Um, but essentially there's no difference between the view presented in the Tantric systems and Dzokha Jempo and that which is presented in the ordinary sutra and philosophical schools. It's because what is at the core of them is a the notion that reality transcends language and transcends conceptual designation. The nature of reality is unelaborated, beyond all conceptual and linguistic positions. <laughs>